Hello, hello, hello. This is Learn GIS with Anna. In this course, we are going from the basics of GIS. Actually, we're staying in the basic of basics of GIS, but we're going from the more basics to the more advanced basics, but still just learning the basics of GIS. I'm happy you have found yourself exactly into this lesson because now the cool part starts. We have been looking into the history of GIS, the term, the real life use cases, and then spatial data. And while that remain still in the core of everything, we will be now starting to actually make maps and visualize and style spatial data. So in this lesson, I will show you how to actually visualize your data in the best possible way, because there are many ways to just drop your data into a GIS tool and then just, um, I don't know, go with that, but it might not be the best way. You might need to make some adjustments so that the visualization is actually informative and that's what we will learn now. So I have three examples for you and let's start with some health site data from Belgium. We actually found that in one of the earlier lessons when we were finding data. So go check that out as well. But okay, let's start by, we are now in the Atlas platform. I will share a link with you how to create a profile. It's so easy. You'll make it in less than a minute and you are up and running with making maps. So how to bring data, you go into the left upper corner and you click in here or you drag and drop your data and I have a geo data folder here so I will go here and bring in the Belgium health site data and let's upload that one and once it has uploaded into the platform it will show in the left side panel in the layers and let's zoom in there and now we have here I already cleaned this data a bit and I only I need to keep the doctors and clinics and hospitals because there was also pharmacies and dentists and so on also empty rows in the data set so now we have this clean data set here okay it's not like super duper clean but you know like it works we see that here are some more points and I mean this is not the worst thing you can see uh there are worse data sets as well to start with the first thing we can do to help our visualization is to change the base map so that we can see better our points because this is a point data set. Okay, but let's see a couple of different ways to visualize this. So I think what we want to showcase here is mainly where there is more of the health facilities. So then we can go to the right side styling panel and to the different visualization types. And here you have standard marker and heat map. But let's first just look into standard. And here, what I would do is I would cluster the points so that you would understand where there is more of the points. So go to cluster, enable clustering, and then you'll see how if you go further, it just sums up the points in that area. And when you zoom in closer, you'll see more of the clusters. And then you can change the colors right here. Maybe you want something. Oh, we can also add some fill. We can have such as 90%. You can just change the colors as you like. For the different points, maybe we can go a bit lighter every time. And there we go. Maybe something like this. And when you zoom in closer, you have the points themselves. You can also edit that one. So you can have it all nicely aligned together. And then we can even remove the outline so that that doesn't bother us. And you can make the points a bit bigger. And then the next thing, we actually don't need our data table open, but we do need to um, check out heat map styling because I think that might fit for this use case even better. So let's go and click heat map and we immediately see where there is more like in Brussels or Antwerp. Um, but here you can do different editings. You can choose what color setting you like. You have different options. We can choose, for example, something like this. And then we can increase the radius if we like, maybe take the intensity a bit lower. And like that, you'll see clearly. Of course, if you zoom out, it's only the heat map, the hotspot in Belgium. But when you zoom in closer, you'll see better. Where are the clusters of this? Actually, not literally clusters because we have a different clustering tool. But this is all for visualizing our health sites. Let's go to example number two, which is how to make a choropleth map, which is basically a way to showcase different polygons that are together. Like we're going to use as an example, US counties and how you can 
create an informative map by choosing the color based on a certain attribute. So let's bring in more data. Let's go back to the plus button and back to my fantastic geodata folder. So let's go to boundaries and the USA census. Oh, this is a large file, so it might take a while. And now that the data has uploaded, it appears in the layers panel on the left side. And we can just click that one and zoom in there. All right. Whew, there are many count. Are these all different counties? Um, whoa, that is many. And so then what we can do is we click the layer so that the styling panel opens on the right side. And then we go to styling. We stay in standard styling and we go to style by field. So we are creating a choropleth map based on population in each county. Because I can show you the data table. It opens here in the upper right corner from the right side layer panel, styling panel, whatever you want to call it. I call it whatever, uh, every time something different. Just to keep you confused, sorry. <laughs> and so we have population here for each. And then we are in styling and we go to fill and we go to style by field. So we want the different polygon. So all these different ones to have a different color based on how much population there is. So we start by field and we go ahead and choose population. So now we still have very few different colors. So most of them fall inside the same category. So this is not good visualization, right? What we need to do here, first of all, these are so small. So the outline is really overpowering. So I would say we change that into white and we make it as thin as possible. So we, you can type zero point something. I would even try 0 0.2 so that you can barely see the outline. So now you see most of them fall into the same category on the left side under the layer. You can see legend which shows the different description. So here, for example, most of them fall inside the same category. So they are lower than this number. So first of all, we can choose what color we would like, colors we would like to have. I would probably go for something a bit more uh, differentiating, maybe diverging even, or yeah, maybe that could be quite nice, something like this. But then I think we need way more steps. So we should go and edit palette. And what we should choose here is to change the method from quantize to quantile, because in quantile, you get more even categories, which works well if you have these sort of very big outliers, right? Like we have in this data right now, most of it goes into one category alone. So let's go and choose quantile and we immediately get more changes. And then we can also just increase the number of steps so that we get more differences. And now we got 10. So that looks quite nice. Then we can also go ahead and increase this number so we can have the fill in 80 for example now you see quite nicely where there is more population both west west coast and east coast and then in the more of the center there is less population like this so this is quite a nice way to create a choropleth map to really visualize how is a certain attribute dividing between different areas like here it's population by county and then we are ready with this and we're going to go into our third example which is also about population but we're going to use a raster file and we're going to highlight population density so where are the hotspots of population in a country so let's go and add more data and let's see i have again our geodata folder and let's go to country rasters and i think we're going to use this south africa one so let's bring that in all right and now that the data has uploaded once again <laughs> we will go and click that one and zoom to fit all right so maybe we can all agree that uh, we have some amazing looking a uh, heat map going on right here in Belgium and we have this very nicely informative choropleth map in the US and then we have this trying to showcase population density in South Africa so that doesn't really work out so we need to do something and raster styling is very different from vector styling the past two data sets this polygon and this point layer were both 
vector data, but this one is raster, it's a TIFF file. And now we have two visualization types. We have image, which is this one, which doesn't work. And then we have color range, which is this one. Then what we can do is we go to color map and we change the color because I don't think this uh, pink one works the best here, but what could work is this last one, but we have to reverse it. So let's go and reverse it first. And then we can go and choose that one. If you add more color range, uh, you have less changes, but if you make it as small as possible, you have the differences very well. So now what we can see here is where we have more population density, such as in Johannesburg or Cape Town, like that. These are all our three examples of how to visualize data in an informative way. Thank you for following this lesson and make sure that you'll watch the next lesson. We, we are going to move forward with styling. This was kind of already a styling lesson, but more to just highlight the importance of the right visualization type. But I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.